Well, hello and welcome to the alcohol ink on metal class. If you're new to me and this is the first class you've done with me, just a quick way of introduction. I'm Nanette, I'm the owner of the Metal Embossing Academy and I've been doing pewter art since about 2004. Um, while we were still living in South Africa is when I started. So um, my grandmother was actually an amazing pewter artist. So um, she's basically the main reason why I'm doing this craft with so much passion and, and joy. Um, she was just phenomenal in the way that she executed her projects and I learned a lot from her. So we moved to New Zealand in 2016 and um, I started the Metal Embossing Academy in 2018 is when I started teaching classes in New Zealand and then also took the business online doing online courses. So I've had a lot of time to practice, <laughs> made many mistakes and I want to get you to a point where you feel confident in your craft way sooner than I, than I did. So I made all the mistakes along the way and my main mission, my passion is to save you from all that hassle. So. I'm really excited about this alcohol ink class in the sense that alcohol ink is a medium that is just absolutely perfect for metal. So it's formulated for non-porous surfaces. Um, the moment you put alcohol ink on paper, it just absorbs. So it doesn't get time to play and get all that beautiful movement and, um, and the different shapes and things that alcohol ink just almost does by itself. So. It's a medium. I'll show you different ways how to use it. So on the one hand, it's a medium over which you have little control, which is actually beautiful that you can almost do anything with alcohol ink and it'll turn out amazing. There are ways to control it. So I'll show you that as well. Um, the reason it's so perfect for metal and metal embossing projects and pewter art is it is perfect for non-porous surfaces, which metal is. So you get all the beautiful movement, um, the, the blooming and the way that it spreads on your metal. The other thing that I really love about it is the fact that it is translucent. So you can still see all the detail and the patterns and the embossing, the height that you created in your embossing projects, you'll see shine through, um, through the layers of alcohol ink. So that's the other thing that you can do with alcohol inks, which you can't really achieve with acrylic inks or um, even acrylic painting or glass paint, is that you can layer, you can keep layering different colors on top of one another. So what happens is you don't really, um, alcohol ink, the best way to explain is that it doesn't blend. So whatever is on your bottom layer, the moment you add more alcohol to that, it'll spread the layer underneath and create the new color on top of it. So they won't actually mix, they won't blend. They'll, uh, the one will make way for the other one as you keep layering new, new colors or new patterns. So the cool thing about that is you, you never end up getting mud right you you don't get these muddy uh, sort of dull colors they keep staying vibrant and colorful and um yeah so it's really fun you can't screw it up <laughs> so on that note let's get started i'm super excited to start with the first technique so in the first video i'll show you a couple of different ways in which you can create backgrounds so let's say you just want to have um maybe uh, your, your metal quite plain. Um, let's say you've done a, an embossed design, maybe in the center of your work, but you want color on the outside, then these techniques are really cool for that and um, super easy to do. The only thing you need to keep in mind is to allow it enough drying time. So in New Zealand, it's winter at the moment. It is our rainy season. It's very humid. So things take a little bit longer to dry. But if you're in a country where it's summer right now, when it's hot and dry, then obviously it'll go quicker. Um, so the first two techniques I'll show you is how to use bubble wrap and cling film to create beautiful background textures and patterns. The, the way to test whether your projects are dry is if you lift a little piece after, I normally leave mine, even on, on summer days, at least overnight. The moment you can see whether it's dry or not is if you press on the alcohol ink, 
and you can see through the, the layers of bubble wrap or cling film and there's still movement, then that is not dry yet. So if you don't see any movement, you can start peeling it up, lifting it up a little by little. And if it sort of makes a sticky sound, you're good to go. But on that note, let's get started. And if you have any questions, please ask those in the Facebook group. If you haven't joined yet, that is the place where you can post images of your work. That's the place where you can get feedback and where I'll be spending a lot of time answering any questions you may have. Um, we will be doing a live Q&A at the end of each week. So that'll be done on Zoom. So you can join me live, you can ask me live questions, you can show me your projects and you know I can answer any questions you may have. But in the meantime, if you get stuck on anything or you're not quite sure how to execute it, I'll be available in the Facebook group and um, just tag me or just, you know, I'll, I'll be scrolling through all the comments and things. So I will see those posts and I'll answer those. So let's dig in, let's have some fun. And um, just remember that this community is incredibly supportive. We love encouraging each other and supporting each other. So this is not the place for negativity. Um, just a friendly reminder that we practice a culture of honor so um, if everyone can just keep that in mind, that'll be super awesome. We'll be here to learn together and to have fun together. And um, yeah, let's, let's get started. Okay, so let's get started. The first technique I want to show you is how to create some beautiful background um, textures using bubble wrap. So this has been done with alcohol inks and you can use any color of your choice. Here's another one I've made. So these are just off cuts that I've had to play with and um, I've gone on to use some of the colored pieces in, uh, in other artworks. So how do we accomplish this? We're going to need a couple of things. The first thing you need, uh, I just want to show you my setup quickly. So I've just got a, a big black plastic sheet on the bottom. And then I just use these little, it's just a plastic placemat really. So super cheap. The, the reason I use these is they clean up very, very easily. So if you do get alcohol ink onto your mat, you can just clean it off, off using isopropyl alcohol. So you can either buy that in large quantities if you're going to do a lot of alcohol ink art or just a small bottle. So that is entirely up to you. So that's the first thing. And then I just have a couple of um, these. This is just aluminium, just, you know, for class sake, just to keep costs low. <laughs> so um, just normal aluminium sheet that you use for embossing. So this would be either a 36 or a 38 gauge which is a 0.3 to 0.5 millimeter thickness. So you can see it's a lot thicker than kitchen foil, but it's what we use to emboss. Okay, so you're going to use some isopropyl alcohol. I normally use um, these little pipettes or plastic droppers. You can use glass ones as well, but I've not had the best luck. You know, sometimes the glass ones drop on the floor and it's in pieces, so these ones are my friend and I can find these we have some uh, local dollar stores a dime a dozen of them so you can find a packet of 10 or 15 even of these plastic ones for literally for two dollars so see where you can find it the cheapest and then that's what we use I normally put some of the isopropyl alcohol into some of these hand sanitizer spray bottles. You can also just use hand sanitizer spray, but that's only 75% alcohol, not 91. So how they differ is the higher the percentage of alcohol inside your isopropyl alcohol, the more movement you will get when you, um, when you apply your alcohol inks. So just to show you, I'm just gonna start spraying my metal with a couple of sprays of the hand sanitizer, so just 75% alcohol. And you'll see I've got some pinata alcohol inks or some um, Ranger alcohol inks. So 
it doesn't matter which one you use the pinatas are a little bit more concentrated so you can actually thin this down i'll show you in a um in one of the other projects that we're going to do i'll show you how to do that but let's just say for instance i, I want to show you how far you get with this so you can apply a drop or two and let's go maybe for a a blue so this is i think this is a sailor or something <laughs> they often change the name so and maybe let's do another color in the middle let's do a yellow and see how they play together so this is butterscotch from ranger inks so now you can go ahead and you can spray some more of your hand sanitizer spray and then we're literally just going to press and hold a little bubble wrap so you can see that the color on this one is not going to be all over the metal so you can still go on and emboss maybe the sides of it or um, even use the little patterns that you're going to get and you can do little designs around that so that's pretty cool so i'm just going to take this one out of the way to let it dry okay so with that one out of the way so what i've done is i literally just picked up my little placemat because the moment you move your bubble wrap uh, around or you pick up your metal it might shift and you won't get those entirely perfect little bubbles so I'm going to do another one and with this one we can play around with some other colors and I want to show you what it looks like when you don't actually apply some of the, the hand sanitizer spray um, along with it so you're going to use a little bit more ink on this one so let's do some pinks this is wild plum This one is pink sherbet. It's quite a light pink. And maybe we can use some watermelon, which is more red. So let's see what that does. So this is going to be a little bit more vivid than the previous one because the alcohol inks will not be diluted. Okay, so the other thing I forgot to mention with the first one is make sure you use the bubble side, not the flat side, the bubble side. So we're going to lay it over, move it around a little bit, press and hold. And then again, I'm just going to pick this up and place it out of the way so it can dry. okay on to the next one so again you'll see it's just a little piece of aluminium so for this one we're going to use cling wrap to create a, a much more um, smooth and wispy look so what we're going to do is for this one we're going to spray a little sheet of metal again with a couple of sprays of the hand sanitizer and then let's see um, I might use some dark purple. So see what it does when it, the moment it gets to the alcohol, it starts reacting and it starts blending. So before we get into the real fun stuff, let me just apply a couple of drops of the pink. We'll see what we'll end up with. I might put a little pop of raspberry just for 
just for fun, you know, just to brighten it up a little bit. Okay, so then once you've done that, you take your glad wrap or cling wrap and just get a big enough piece. Okay, so then we're going to lay this over. See that? So now you can decide if you like what it does on its own. This is actually really cool. You can leave it like that and leave it to dry. So what I haven't mentioned yet is the drying time absolutely depends on the climate you're in. So how humid it is, the temperature, all of that. Um, I've found that most of these, the bubble wrap ones and the cling wrap, take... I normally leave them overnight and even then sometimes when I lift it off it's not completely dry so don't be in a hurry <laughs> don't be in a hurry when you do these it takes a little bit of time to dry you can probably speed it up if you want to dry it with a hair dryer from the front um, so you know totally play around with it I actually really love the look of this one so I'm going to leave this just as is and then I'll show you another way to do this too Right, so just for fun, let's use some copper-plated aluminium. So it's silver on the one side, copper on the other. So you can use alcohol inks on that too. So alcohol ink, you can use it on uh, just normal copper. You can use it on pewter and aluminium. So whichever metal you love to emboss with is perfect. Okay, so this one is cranberry. It's got this beautiful dark red color and I'm going to add some butterscotch which is the yellow now you can see I'm literally using a couple of drops at a time I've had these alcohol ink bottles for gosh we've been in New Zealand for seven years so this must be at least eight to ten years old and I haven't used any of the bottles completely and I you know I use alcohol ink quite a lot so they last you a long time it is well worth the investment I'm actually going to add some plum just for fun now see what it does when the alcohol ink comes in contact with other colors it just starts playing and spreading all by itself so I'll show you another fun thing you can do in a minute but let me just quickly show you another way to do the cling wrap technique. So with the previous one, I literally just laid it down over the, over the, um, the metal. And I just let it do its own thing. But you can go further with it. Sorry, it's wrinkling up on me so <laughs> as it does. Okay, so I'm going to lay it over. And then what you can do is you can press on it. And move the ink like that so you can literally push the colors wherever you want them to go and all these little wrinkles that the bubble wrap or the cling wrap is making will leave these beautiful patterned lines when we're done so that's pretty cool okay so I'm going to take this one out of the way and we'll do the next one Right, so you can see my mats are getting a bit messy. So to clean them, I'm going to use some hand sanitizer spray. Just spray a couple of drops of that and wipe with a paper towel. And it might not completely remove it, but it'll be better. So there we go. We can try and get that off. Another really good way of using alcohol inks if the mess worries you <laughs> is to get a glass cutting board. So on the glass, um, if you mess any alcohol inks on there, you can just use the, the hand sanitizer gel and that removes all traces of alcohol ink. So that's really cool. So let me just clean the other board quickly. Oops, sorry for that.
So because these mats have got a little bit of a texture, uh, I doubt we'll be able to get all the ink off, but that really doesn't bother me too much. There we go. Okay, doke, on to the next one. Okay, so the previous techniques were all done on smooth surfaces, so just the plain metal. So I want to show you what happens with a textured background. So again, we're going to go for the copper. You're going to use some of your isopropyl alcohol. Uh, and it absolutely depends on you whether you want to put it in your little spray bottle or you want to use a pipette. So I'll show you both ways. So we're going to use that. And for this technique, I'm going to use a straw. So the other thing you can use, you just have a little bit more control. So if you want to, you know, move it more directly into the little grooves and things, you have a bit more control. But the other thing I found really fun is just to use one of these um, balloon inflators. So again, you get these for about $2. You, you can use a hairdryer, you can just blow it, but you just have a little bit more control when you use one of these. So fun things to play with. All right, so I want to show you um, how far you can get with literally one drop of the piñata color. So this is super concentrated. Um, I have it in, I have a lime green piñata, a blue, a baja blue, and this beautiful passion purple. So with literally a drop of the, I'm just going to play, so one drop there. And then I'm going to use my little pipette or dropper. And so for this one, I'm going to use the 91% alcohol and a straw. So I'm going to drop it in there. And you can see already what it's doing is it's moving around by itself. So we can add another drop and see how far it goes. So now you can start playing with it. By blowing on it. All right, so just for fun, let's add another color to that. Um, what shall we use? Do -do -do. Let's maybe go for blue and I'll show you what happens when they mix. So another drop or two of my just plain isopropyl alcohol. So with this one, I'm going to blow on it directly, show you what happens there. add another one maybe on this side so see what happens when they mix is they just start forming a whole different color so I just find this so lovely about the alcohol inks is the creative freedom you get when you play with it So now I'm going to add some alcohol first and then I'm going to add some of my colors. So for this one, I'm going to use pool. You can also pick it up and just let it do its own thing. So you can start moving it around wherever you want it to go. So this way it, it goes and lies more in the grooves. And then see what happens over there 
when it mixes, we just get different colors again. I'm going to blow on it again. So the more alcohol you add to your eggs, the more diluted they become. So that's entirely up to you. The cool thing about it is you can't actually make a mistake. You can keep laying and uh, one, of the, one of the best alcohol ink artists I, I used to follow online always said you're only as good as your next layer or your last layer. So you can keep adding inks, you can keep laying and don't be afraid to just have fun just to play with it. Okay, so I'm going to show you with this one, the big one, go from that angle. So you can see that purple is quite vivid, so literally a drop of ink can go a long, long way. And you can spread it out and you can move it around. So the other thing that is entirely a personal decision is whether you want to cover the whole entire background or whether you want your copper to shine through. So I'm going to leave this one like, well, maybe let's do something else here. That's a little bit too much for me. So let's see. I can thin it out a bit. Make it blend this way. Okay, so you can see that using the little blower tool dries it really quickly. So alcohol ink in general doesn't take too long to dry anyway. It, um, I'd say if you give it about 30 seconds, maybe a minute, it'll be dry. So, um, you know, the moment it starts dry, it's permanent. Um, unless, of course, you want to add some more alcohol to it. I just want to show you... Um, See if I've got a little, doo -doo 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 -doo. hang on, I'll show you that in the next step. Okay, so this is something that you can keep in mind. If you have a background uh, layer of color down on your metal and you want some interesting texture, so added texture, so you've got the texture of the metal, you've got the color spreading, but if you want some more depth and dimension, here's something cool that you can do. And I just wanna pour a little bit. These cups are really handy to have close by when you're working with alcohol ink. So I just wanna add a couple of drops there. And just use a very, very fine tip uh, brush, dip it in there. And now the moment I touch the alcohol that's already dry, it's going to reactivate and it's going to start making these little circles. So it's entirely up to you how much you want to add. The more you add, obviously the bigger circle the circle will become. 
let's say I want to add one there that's a bit bigger so can you see how that is spreading out the moment you add a, just literally a drop of plain isopropyl alcohol it starts moving the inks again so that's the fun thing about this medium is you can keep adding ink you can keep adding um, just isopropyl alcohol as many layers as you want and the more colors you're going to add so now let's say for instance now that this is dried well fairly dried uh, let's say I want to go in and I want to add a different color to it literally a drop will send it all moving again I don't know if you guys can see how that's just reacting so just for continuity sake let's add a drop of the yellow over here that'll fill the little flower so the cool thing is about the alcohol ink when you work with a background that has these little patterns in it you can well that was maybe a little bit of a big drop so it went over the edges but what's cool about it is you can use the patterns and you can use the design on the background to determine where your color goes so I can push this further if I wanted to while it's still wet oh there, <laughs> there was some alcohol on there so it just like went like that Okay, so it's time for the big reveal. <laughs> Our little bubble wrap project has had some time to dry completely. Uh, I left this for about two days just because I got busy with other things. But it is now completely dry. And when we peel it off, that is what you're left with. So there's just some dust over there. But you can see as I rub over these, they are now completely dry. And this is a beautiful little background. Now, if you want to reactivate the inks that are left on your um, on the bubbles, you can just spray it again with a little bit of your hand sanitizer spray or um, your isopropyl alcohol. You can spray it on and you can even just put it on a card. So actually, let me just show you quickly because you can still use that ink. Okay, so I just have a little piece of mounting board, just some thick cardboard over here. And because we used the bubble part of the bubble wrap, I'm just going to spray that with some of the, um, the hand sanitizer spray. And lay it down. Because the alcohol ink keeps reactivating, once you spray it with some solvents, even after it's completely dry... You can keep on creating textures or making cards. This is going to be too light to put onto your metal. Um, so if you have some more alcohol ink left on your little bubble wrap, you can actually do another piece of metal. But because it's quite light, there's not a lot left. Um, when I spray my solvent spray on this or my sanitizer, you'll see that it just reactivates and it takes this off. So there are lots of different options and that's why I just love this ink. It, you, just, you just get so far with it. A couple of drops and you just keep going. So this could be, I don't know, you know, you can use it, uh, even mount a little uh, pewter off cut on there, some shapes or flowers or whatever. So there's lots of different ways to use this. Okay, now what can we do with this little piece? If, for instance, you want to go ahead and highlight these little shapes that you've got, I just want to grab my tool quickly. Okay, so I just have my little Teflon tip tool, so it's nice and sharp. So let's say, for instance, I want to use the patterns that we've created and I want to draw a design or um, even highlight those little shapes. Something that you can do is to put your metal, so this was just a flat sheet of metal, there was no texture on it. So put it onto um, a rather thick piece of cardboard or even 
a piece of felt depending on the depth you want to create. So I'm just going to show you on here. Let's say for instance we want to highlight a couple of these shapes and make them stand out a bit more. You press fairly hard on your cardboard which will then indent the metal from the front and I'll show you how to raise those in a second. Okay, so we're not going to do the whole thing. I just want to show you some ideas for this. Just give me a quick look at my little paper pencil. Okay. So if you want to raise these up a little bit, you take your paper pencil, lay your metal on a flat hard board, and just push around it with your paper pencil and that'll just push these little shapes up a little bit. So it just gives you some more, more options if you want to create um, interesting backgrounds or um, just some extra texture in your work. So as you push it in, it actually starts lifting those little shapes up and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Bring you a bit closer. So as you can see, there's not a lot of height on these, but what it did is it sort of eliminated those little shapes and made them pop a little bit more. So if you want to take this further, you can now lay it on some felt or whatever soft surface you use for your embossing. And you can push these little identified shapes from the back. Uh, let me actually do two layers. Now just keep in mind that although your alcohol ink is now permanent, some of it can rub off as you emboss from the back. So don't be too rough with it. You can remove some of it, so be fairly gentle. Okay, and then again from the front, we just want to level it out again. So this part is just to keep the surrounding metal around the shapes nice and flat and wrinkle free. And if you want to really define it nicely again, you just go over again with your Teflon tip tool or your, your embossing tool. And all this does is it just defines those shapes very beautifully.
Okay, so as you can see, these little shapes now have a bit more height than the rest of them. So all of this just gives, I don't know, it just gives some added um, interest to your pieces. So even if you just use this for a background, let's say you have a beautifully embossed pewter object in the middle and you create these little dots around it for extra texture and, and interest, that'll look stunning. So you can keep playing with this. I'll show you another technique you can do. Now, if you want to keep going and keep playing with this, Another technique you can use is to add stamping or stenciling to it. So let's say, for instance, I want to add some flowers and butterflies to this piece. You can use stays on ink. This is a permanent ink. So I've just got a little flower stamp over here. So for all those of you who love doing mixed media and just a lot of different crafts, this is so cool. So let's say I want to add maybe, uh, let's just, I'm just going to put it over here so you can see what happens. And there's a little butterfly stamp. So with the stays on, you can apply it over the alcohol ink without reactivating it. I'm just going to put this one over both of those. So this is not a, a craft project. This is literally just to show you what it does and what you can add to make your projects really interesting. Okay, I didn't put enough uh, ink on that pad, but it, it, I don't know, you can now you can go and play with it further. So say for instance, just want to see which pen tip I've got here. Um, let's go back to the thin one. Okay. So now you can even go around this with your gold ink, with your little paint pens. and do something like that. So again, this is just to show you what you can do with your alcohol inks, how you can apply them, what you can apply over them without reactivating them. So stays on ink, and this is a, a Ranger product, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, oh, Tuneco is the company who, who manufactures these. So this is made specifically for plastic, glass, metal, ceramic, laminated paper, coated paper, and leather. Not recommended for fabric. All right, and once this is dried, it is permanent as well. So you can go over it again with a water-based sealant without reactivating it. But um, just always keep that in mind. When you work with alcohol inks, if you wanna seal your project, you can either use, um, like I said, an acrylic spray, or you can use a gel medium as long as it's acrylic. You can paint it over as, as long as everything on your project is dry. Well, there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And um, your homework task for this week is to, if you can and you have alcohol ink on hand, is to practice one or two of these techniques any which way you want to. So the cool thing about us learning in community is that every person will interpret this differently in their own way and we'll be able to get the benefit of that. So for every person who does the homework, chores or the tasks for this week, you'll be able to see maybe a different way or um, just a different perspective on how to implement these techniques which will also expand your own learning. So please don't be shy. Um, that's what the Facebook group is there for, is for you to post images of your work, to see what others are doing, um, to support one another, and yeah, and, and to learn together. So, um, so if you guys can go ahead and do that, then I'll post links and I'll keep you posted throughout the week on um, the time 
for a live Q&A. So that's why it's important to just note your time zone that you're situated in, in the welcome post in the group, so that I can wrap my brain around where everybody is and which would be a convenient time for all of us to get together on Zoom later in the week. So if you guys can go ahead and do that in the meantime, then I'll create a poll and just ask um, which times would suit you best for that. So awesome, well have fun. Have fun learning, have fun implementing these techniques, choosing your, um, your colors. And um, yeah, so I'll see you guys inside the group and then the next video will arrive in your mailbox on Monday next week.